Hello. I recorded two hours of stuff and the microphone wasn't on. So, rather than reprogram it all, I'm going to just walk you through how I did it, and hopefully it'll be a lot easier that way. It'll take less than half an hour. Obviously the thing I did is the slimes now get kicked around, so let's get on it. The first thing that we need to do is here in the animator, you need to change the slime's animator so that it contains this die and this flinch. Uh, the die and the flinch can be found in the slime's blender file. And you just stick them in there and you say, well, if you're about to die, go to the die, and if, if your boolean flinch is true, go to the flinch. The attack I've dragged off, and you can no longer attack from any state, you now have to attack from, from the maneuver, maneuver node, because you can't attack in the middle of dying or flinching, obviously. But it's the same idea. You attack when attack turns to true. Straightforward enough. But you have to program something to make it so that the flinch and die booleans get set properly. All right. Well, as you might remember, in the slimes, we have a mob AI script and we have a battle unit script. Uh, now, the battle unit is responsible for actually keeping track of all that stuff, like HP and stuff like that. But it doesn't have any idea what to do when the HP is reduced. So that's what the mob AI comes in for. The mob AI understands that there's an animator and knows how to react to getting hit and all of that stuff. But how do we get the battle unit to actually talk to the mob AI script? One way is to say, well, battle unit, you know, get component mob AI script, mob AI script, and you know, tie them together like that. But a more flexible way is to use unity events. So as you can see, I've set up two unity events here. And they both point to the mob AI. One is the on the on damaged event points to mob AI dot take damage, and the on death event points to mob AI dot die. So how did I do that? Well, over here in the mob AI, oop, we need the battle unit. Over here in the battle unit script, I just created public unity event on damaged and on death, and you have to add the unity engine dot events uh, namespace if you want to do it like this, but that's very easy. You just have to remember to do it. Uh, and once you've added these, they just pop up in the inspector and you can assign them however you'd like. In here, we had this HP system where the HP, when you modify the HP, a variety of things happen. And I've just made it so that you, uh, you get damaged or die here in the HP area rather than um, uh, trying to figure it out somewhere else or at the end of a function or anything like that. What we do have to do is this on damage.invoke, we need to make this an else because we don't want to both get damaged and die. We want to do one or the other uh, in terms of visual. So this actually uh, makes all of those events fire. And we got them pointed over here at the mob AI script. So here's took damaged and here's die. So it just says ow and it just says oof. And it sets the boolean to true. And it also turns off apply root motion. Now if you don't turn off apply root motion, then the animator's root motion will override the rigid body. Uh, to show you what happens with that, let's turn this off and go back in. Nope, come on. It just goes straight up and down. The rigid body, uh, the animator's apply root motion actually makes the rigid body unable to apply X or Z motion. So you have to turn it off if you want to um, uh, if you want to be able to knock back at the enemy arbitrarily. You can also build knockback into the animation if you'd prefer. So what we do over here in the update, we turn flinch off because that way you have to turn it off after you turn it on or else you won't ever be able to flinch again. So we just turn it on for one frame and then we turn it back to off. Here we say, well, if our rigid body is turned off, well, check if we should turn it back on. And that basically, we turn it back on once we're done being flung around. So there are other ways to do this, but in our case, this works fine. So with that all applied, we have a nice knockback system, and uh, we have all of our all of our stuff tied together. Bam. Of course, the knockback isn't perfect in this case, and that's because uh, apply root motion actually makes your y-axis tremble a little bit and it can backfire and malfunction. Uh, and also, it really depends on whether or not um, what gets what gets applied first. In this case, it looks like we have a bug where uh, we are applying... Uh, sometimes it gets applied backwards and 
and we get the velocity applied before the root motion turns off. Uh, and that means that sometimes it'll still fly straight up. And I'll work on that a little bit, but basically uh, it's at least entertaining at this point. And our future enemies would probably won't use any root motion because it's a kind of a pain in the ass. Uh, and some of this is not because the animators are malfunctioning. Some of this is because um, uh, they are squares. So we might want to come up with a better collision, some sort of uh, blob that's flattened at the bottom, just so that they, uh, they react better when you hit them uh, and they don't lock together or catch their edges on the ground. But this is definitely good enough for now. Now, that took five and a half minutes to explain, but it took two hours to program. So, uh, I hope you understood what I did, but I wanted to make sure that you understood the idea of where we're going to take this. The slime we have is um, uh, on damage and on death are now pointed at the mob AI. We're going to be using these unity events to point at each other for a lot of things in the future. Our entire... Um, uh, basis, all of the things we're going to be doing, we're going to be making the mob AI the core of our AI system. And the way we're going to do that is not by creating 9,000 different AI units. Not, you know, we're not going to descend from mob AI 8,000 times. What we're going to do is we're going to create modular AI components, and then we're going to use these unity events to trigger them. And, uh, and that's going to be uh, the way that we're going to build flexibility into our system without requiring 10,000 acres of hard-coded responses. Uh, so learning Unity events is very useful. In the future, we're probably going to have to make some Unity events that have arguments attached to them. That's a little bit more complicated, so I left off and didn't do that this time. Uh, so, sorry this one was all like retrospective rather than live. Um, I try to have my microphone work, but sometimes it doesn't. Uh, so, sorry about that.